What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Hungry Road. My name is Eric. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, thank you for tuning in. The rental for this week is the 2021 Ford Explorer Limited. Now this is like the mid-range of all the different Explorers that are offered this year. This body style did debut last year in 2020 and I think it is way better than any of the explorers that have been in the past i did see this guy at the rental lot i had to wait a little bit because national was a little backed up not many cars it was a steelers game or something and a lot of cars came in late so i waited i waited i said i've never driven one of those let me give it a shot and i'm gonna tell you what i think about it or oh, i forgot to mention i'm in west virginia this week well i flew into pittsburgh got the car from pittsburgh drove down to morgantown doesn't matter you guys are here for the truck but yes, like I did mention, this is the limited. It is one of seven different tiers or trims that Ford offers on the Explorer. First one's gonna be the Explorer base. Just regular rear wheel drive, whatever. Starts about $35,000. Then you can step up to the XLT. Offers a few more options. Then there's the limited. That's what this one is here. Now what distinguishes the limited from the other the other trims are going to be these 20 inch wheels or stock there is an optional aluminum sort of coating you can put on them make them shinier or whatever this one doesn't have it these are the stock 20 inch wheels for the limited you also get the optional star white metallic paint looks good really bright in the sun it's kind of bouncing off of the paint right now hit me in the face you also get body colored mirrors you get the roof rails you get leather seats you get adaptive cruise control you get the ford co-pilot system which is kind of like an autonomous driving kind of thing it's kind of cool i didn't expect it uh but it's in the car really works really well you'll see it later and during my driving portion you also get the hands-free tailgate a, a lot of other things i'll go over more of these options in a minute but anyway moving on the fourth tier is going to be the st that would be the trim that i would get you're going to get the most power in the engine you're going to get 400 horsepower from the three liter twin turbo v6 the same engine is also available in the King Ranch and the, uh, I'm sorry, the Platinum is the word I was looking for. You're going to get the same engine in the Platinum as the King Ranch and the ST, but the ST has been tuned up to 400. The other two are going to be at 365, but we ain't talking about none of those. We talk about this guy right here. And this one has a 2.3 liter turbo four cylinder. The same engine that was in the Mustang I reviewed last week. Somehow they make these engines smaller and smaller, but squeezing more and more power out of them. This thing makes 300 horsepower from a single turbo four cylinder. Like, I, I don't get it. And it goes to all wheel drive. So the torque is there and you, you'll come off the line, but you'll see what happens later on. But don't worry about that. So let's get into some of these features. So in 2020, Ford debuted the all new Ford Explorer, which was this one here. It's the same looking thing. It's just a new model year or whatever. But I think they did an incredible job with it. It is so much more aggressive, so much more masculine, so much more presence on the road. It's bulky. I mean, it could haul seven people, more like 5.5 because you don't really want three adults in the third row. Don't get, anyway, don't get me started. But I love what they did with it. Everything is just so new so modern i it, it looks like it fits in this into this generation into this millennia unlike the last ones they were all rounded and soft and i i didn't like them but this one i do really like a lot so let's get started up front here we do have the silver mesh grill which is uh another staple of the limited package if you get the sto you get the black grill which looks just like the ford Taurus show grill or a bunch of the other car performance grills don't don't worry about it <laughs> and we have the big giant ford logo right here in the center obviously you know it's going to house the adaptive cruise control radar which will help keep you safe below it we do have the front facing camera which does help with the 360 camera package it is so helpful so it gives you a top down view of what it looks like when you're trying to park or whenever you want to use it it's so helpful especially for parallel parking in new york city or something like that down here we got our parking sensors little plastic grill nothing crazy good ground clearance here and off to the side here we do have our led lights this one is going to be your high beam low beam off to the outside fog lamp here and my favorite part this strip 
It is just a series of LEDs. It is so clean and so straight. It just looks so good, especially at night or in the twilight, early morning, whenever, when these are the only ones that are on. It's, it makes a statement. It's very simple. It's very subtle, but it, it's, it's great. Have you seen those Range Rover lights? They do like some crazy loop and all kinds. Of, that's too much. This is just the perfect statement. I love what they did with this front end here. And the back end looks equally as good, equally as aggressive. It matches the front end perfectly. Brake light up here. Got your windshield wiper for the back. Got a little spoiler down here. Adds a little sporty feel. Helps keep the car planted to the road when you're going really fast in your seven passenger SUV. We do have our running lights right here. This is sort of a matted glass. So it just looks like a nice solid C or whatever. Reverse lights in the middle. Got your limited trim there. Backup camera right dead center. I do like when cars have the backup camera dead center, not off to the side or something, because I'd be having parking problems. Don't worry about it. We have the name right across the back here in chrome logo, parking system at the bottom. And we do have the dual chrome exhaust, which is another standard feature on the limited. Really good looking back end here. I like it. I like it a lot. So here we have the keys to the Ford Explorer. Pretty standard looking key, just like the Mustang from last week. Got this Ford logo in the middle there instead of the Mustang. We have our unlock button up top, lock button right here in the middle. We have a remote start button. You press that twice after the car has already been locked to start the car. It'll run for about 10 minutes. And if you don't get out there in 10 minutes, it'll shut it back off. To remote start the car, you can't just press the remote start button twice. Nothing happens as you can see. You do have to press the lock button first to initiate the sequence, then press the remote start button twice. And the car starts right up. If I could change that in the settings, and here we have the open the hatch button, press it twice, pan button below, no big deal. But like most cars right now, the car is locked. Just grab your hand and the car will unlock, the mirrors will unfold. And if you wanna lock the car, I thought you had to press this little chrome thing. I'm not sure what this is, probably just for accent or for you know, aesthetics, but there's a little lock logo right here. You press that and that's how you lock the car. Usually I'm just seeing a button out here somewhere, but I like where they put that. So now we're in the driver's seat of the Ford Explorer and it's really nice. It's not too much, it's not too little. It's done tastefully. I don't really like the use of the fake wood here, but I do believe you get real wood in the King Ranch. Don't quote me, but let's move on. It's not too much, it's not too little. I really like it. It's right in the middle Goldilocks status. You know what I mean? I do like we have three memory settings. So mom, dad or dad dad my mom and a kid or whatever and you have those settings you just press your button and your seat will change and your seat will also move when you turn the car off it gets it puts you into like an exit sort of situation and then we turn the car back on it moves into whatever the last setting was we do have aluminum trim right here on the handle down here the window switches the window the front windows are automatic no big deal you move the mirrors decent water bottle stores down here, whatever else you wanna put down there. But one gripe, as I had before other cars, look how far I have to reach out to shut the door. I'm pretty much outside the car now. Like maybe I shouldn't open it so much, maybe I should just leave it like, that's that's more tasty. But no, that's, that's a really far way to reach to get out. But let's move on. We do have our lights and our tailgate over here off to the left side, tailgate buttons to the left, the light settings right here coin little box sorry it's a fuse box that's not a coin box at all <laughs> we do have our vents here one for the uh, winter passenger or driver's side window we do have another vent here for me another one over here for me let's get to the steering wheel it can be a little um intimidating at first but it's because all the buttons are on the front and there's nothing on the back which is fine we do have your volume control down the bottom left corner here. We do have our seek and go backwards for songs or whatever on the bottom right corner of the steering wheel. And we have our adaptive cruise control up here on the top left. So you can change the distance of how close you're following the car in front of you with these buttons here. You can also turn on and turn off the Ford Co-Pilot, which is the, you know, the autonomous driving. And you know cruise control, standard stuff. You can scroll through your menus right here in front of you. We do have a speedometer off to the right, tachometer to the left, and your information screen right in front of you. Nice traditional looking setup, nothing too crazy. Engine start stop button is right front and center, just right next to the steering wheel. You press the button, feels nice in my hand. It's a nice round button, no big deal. We do have one of those eight inch screens up here at the top. 
that looks like it just plopped up there. It doesn't like it was built into the dash like a few other cars, but this one just plopped right up there. And the screen doesn't even go to the edge. There's like half an inch or three quarters of an inch of border around the entire screen. What's up with that, Ford? We have TVs that have zero border. Why can't we get that in our cars? But moving on, we do have a space to put sunglasses or a phone or whatever right beneath the screen. Volume control to the left, tune to the right, flashes below uh, below the screen there. And here's like can activate your cameras. So you can press the camera button and then now you get that top down view, what I was talking about. So you got the front camera, the two cameras on the side, which are actually underneath the mirrors. And you had the rear camera in the back. They all work together to give you an image of top down. And if you press the button up into the top left corner of the screen, you can change the camera you're looking at. So right now, we're looking at a 360 degree camera. I can press this button here, the front one. Now I'm looking at just the front camera. I can go back to the menu and press the wide angle, which gives me a wider looking angle. And of course, the rear view camera comes on when you put the car into reverse. To cancel that, you just press the camera button again and you go back to your main screen. Below that are climate controls. Pretty standard, nothing crazy. It is tri-zone climate in this car. So I have a zone for me, a zone for my passenger, and a zone for the rear, but you can always just turn the rear off, save a little bit of energy, no big deal. We do have three levels of heated seats, a heating steering wheel, that is so clutch, and air conditioned seats. Those are also clutch. If you don't know about them, you better ask somebody. Underneath the climate control, we do have more space. You're gonna press this chrome piece down and the lid lifts up. We do have a USB-C, a traditional USB. And then we have a 14 volt outlet or 12 volt outlet down here, cigarette lighter, whatever you wanna call it. Plenty of storage in here for whatever you wanna store. I have no idea what you put in here. We have our drive selector here. Behind that, we have our parking brake. Behind that is auto hold. So the auto hold, if you're on a hill or at a light, you can take your foot off the brake and the car will hold itself still. So you don't gotta sit there with your foot on the brake. You can take your foot off the brake if you want to for whatever reason, but that's what that button does. We have an auto stop start. You know, I hate those. So I always turn it off, but in sport mode, you kind of just leave it on. We have our traction control. I don't see why you wanna turn it off, but in some situations where you're stuck, you might wanna turn it off. And then we have our hill descent. So. If you're going down a hill or if you're going down a steep embankment, you can press this button. And it'll keep the speed that you want to go while going down the hill. It won't let you just roll willy nilly out of control. It'll help control the speed of the car while going down the hill. And behind that, we do have our storage. Lift it up. Pretty decent. Nothing crazy. Little coins slot here. Plenty, plenty of space down here. You can put all types of stuff and everybody wants to know this is where you can charge your phone you just kind of leave your phone leaning up against this little rubber mat and it'll charge itself it works pretty well all right so let's get in the back seat i do have a grab handle here to help me get in i do have the seat where i would be sitting if the car is running so the seat went to my seat position i do have plenty of knee room uh, inch or two back here, but I don't need more than that. I'm pretty comfortable. I can slide my feet under. I feel like I'm sitting on an airplane, sort of. Ha <laughs> ha. We do have a uh, storage pouch back here. Nothing crazy. Leather everywhere. I like it. My own vent here. A reading light. A little hanger for my suits. And I can also have the window shade go up. So I can just kind of lift up and hook it up. And boom, it's done. Not bad. As you can see, block the sun out. Same aluminum trim back here, really nice. Storage door pockets, my own window control, nothing crazy, I like it. And back here we do have our tri-zone, our, our third climate control. Please do not ask me what this substance is, because I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna ignore it and move on. I can turn the climate control on or off from back here, power it on by pressing the power button. I can choose my feet, or my head, so the head probably come from up here, and it's probably a, a vent down there somewhere. I do have a USB-C and a USB charger back here, and a full 110 volt power outlet back here, more storage, very nice, very nicely done for it. I also have two cup holders and even more storage. Like how much storage do you need? But you can never have enough storage when you have 
possibly seven people in here, a big family, you know, all that kind of stuff. But these, this is the captain's seats configuration. It's two seats, pretty much the same as the ones in front. You can get the bench, which is all, you know, a bench seat. So you'd be able to see eight if you had the bench seat in here because you get two in the front, three in the second row, and then three in the back if it's possible. I want to see that done. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's nice back here. I, I like it. I dig it. Like most cars these days, you do have hands-free tailgate opening. Make sure you line yourself up with the middle of the back. Kick your foot swiftly underneath. The lights will flash and the tailgate will open up for you. Then you can put your stuff inside. And when you're done, you can either press the trunk button up here to close it, or you can press the lock button, then the trunk button, and that'll close the tailgate and lock the car when you walk away. So I can do this. And then I'm gonna do the swift kick and the lights will flash, tailgate will close, and the car will lock itself back up. As you will see the mirrors fold in, and we're good. Getting into the third row is not too much of a hassle. There is a button up here on the left shoulder. Press that button once you hear a few motors doing stuff. The seat folds forward and allows it to slide up without any extra room or any extra steps. Get on in. And this third row is kind of right sitting on the floor of the car so see how bent my knees are right now and i just pull the seat back and reset it so now you can hope you can see me in here but yeah remember to make sure this arm is up when you want to roll this down because if your arm is out like this the seat's not going to fall all the way forward but yeah so if you want to get out yeah i mean there's not much in here i have a cup holder Actually, yeah, how can you get seven people? Like I said, five and a half, because two of me, that's it. But I have a good amount of headroom in here. I'm actually surprised. But I have no amenities, really. Just some storage pockets. I do have a, a pocket for water or whatever. But yeah, if you want to get out, press the button here. Seat folds forward. You can push it forward and get out. Now, I wish there were a handle or something I could grab onto, because I feel really uninsecure about getting out right now so i gotta grab all kinds of stuff and slide out and make a fool of myself but it's doable but do you want to do it not really and when you're out you're gonna slide it back and you're good to go so there's an okay amount of storage in here if you have the third row up but like if you have all seven people in here there's no way you're getting all their stuff back here so you're gonna need roof rack accessories and all that kind of stuff but let's say it's just four of you guys and you uh, uh, let's try this let's say it's five of you there's two in the front two in the second row and one person back here in the third so you need some extra space here's how you get that extra space on the right side of the car over here you have three buttons you have the ability to lower the left seat both seats at the same time or the right seat there's also a 12 volt outlet back here for any reason so let's say the guy or girl, whoever is sitting on the left side, and you want this space over here. Press the right button there, and the seat will fold itself down, completely motorized. So now you have the ability to stack some bags up there, and this person here can make sure they don't move around. And if you want to bring the seat back up, just press it again. How convenient is that? Motorized third row seats. I think that is amazing. Want to do both at the same time? Press the L and the R together, and both seats go down at the same time. I mean, this is just awesome. It's almost fun to do this. I'm gonna do it again when I turn the camera off. But now you have a nice flat load floor, and if you wanted to lower the seats in the front, you can do that with those straps. But let's pull them back up. Press the L and R button, the one right in the middle. Seats come right back up. I don't want to bore you with too many settings here in the infotainment screen, but we'll, just get, we'll go through a few of them. In your driver assistance menu here, kind of a slow system here, you do have your cruise control lane, keep a system, you know, all the safety features, you can turn those on, turn them off, whatever you want to do with that. Press the back button, let's go into the vehicle setting here. 30 minute max idle, so the car will shut itself off at 30 minutes of idling. Nothing crazy, just stuff to kind of protect the fuel economy and all that stuff, Up, oh, wrong one. Slide over to the next one here. Apple CarPlay is here, along with Android Auto. And slide over one more time. We're gonna get to the ambient light. Of course, my favorites. We have the, looks like teal. Is there a color for it? Nope. Didn't tell you what color it is. 
But yeah, you have teal, orange, it's like a light blue, red, green, indigo, and like a purple over here. And as you uh, trigger these, let's turn the lights off here, look over around you, we have the setting here. So it's pink, go green, turns to green. The ambient lighting isn't like too crazy, but it's decent and it's nice to have. I don't even see any in the back seats at all. Footwell has a little bit of ambient light down there, but nothing crazy. So we are inside the 2021 Ford Explorer Limited. Again, very cozy. I like it. Not quite king of the road feel like I was in the Tahoe, but I do like it a lot. It's a little smaller than that truck, of course, so it's a little easier to handle, a little more nimble, but this is still an SUV. I'm not even gonna hold you up. Has great power, not even gonna lie to you. From that 2.3 liter single turbo four cylinder, I can't get that out of my head. I can't get over that. How does that small of an engine make power for this to make me feel like this, you know? It kind of throws me back in the seat a little bit. That, that wasn't exaggerated, that was real. But no sound, but who cares? Maybe the ST might have the sound I'm looking for. But overall, really good vehicle. We do have several different driving modes here. There's a little driver selector thing right here. So if we turn it to the left, it kind of activates it. So I'm in normal right now. If I turn it counterclockwise, puts me in slippery mode. I'm sure that monitors the wheel spin just a little bit better. Then we have trail for off-roading. RPM has jumped up a little bit, and now I have deep snow and sand. So we got like two different off-road modes here, as well as a slippery mode. Then we're gonna turn past the normal, because normal like the middle of this sort of circle thing here. And we're gonna turn it clockwise now, puts me in eco mode if I wanna save gas. Speaking of gas, I've been getting pretty good gas mileage, not even gonna lie. Uh, what am I at right now? 20.2 miles per gallon average that was from driving from pittsburgh all the way down to morgantown putting around morgantown and then now i'm on my way back to pittsburgh so i'm still in the work clothes here pretty good gas mileage so anyway back to the other mode so eco then we have sport my favorite mode like the screen gets a little red all right so we're getting on the highway here doing about 40 miles an hour i'll put my foot down as soon as it gets straight 40 foot down There's 60, but yeah, that torque is there to all four wheels. This thing does come off the line pretty well. It gets moving. I like it a lot. I'm anxious to see what an ST really feels like with an extra 90 horsepower. That might be really nice. So in order to use Ford's co-pilot system, which is their form of autonomous driving, we do need to set up cruise control and adaptive cruise control first. So cruise control is activated by this button here by my left thumb. There it is. Now we turn that on. You can look in the Get, uh, dash right there. So I'm gonna set my cruise to 77. So I'm gonna flick this little switch down here. One, two, three, okay. So now it says 77, Let's zoom back out. Now I can press this button here with the steering wheel. I can turn it on. And in the top left corner, we have the little green steering wheel with the lanes. So now I can take my hands off the wheel and the car will essentially steer itself. Well, not on a straightaway, but, and if you take your hand off the wheel for too long, it will say, keep hands on the steering wheel. Yep, and if you don't do it, give the wheel a little tug, like what I'm doing. All right, here we go here. And it will steer me around this little bend. Pretty cool, but yes, you gotta give it a little bit of a tug to reset the system and it'll just steer you. I like it. In conclusion, I'm a big fan of the new Ford Explorer. Like I did mention earlier, the ST would be my variant because I need that power. I want all the aggressiveness. I want all the sportiness. I want all that stuff. The Limited is great too. For a rental, it's amazing. For a good family, it's amazing. It, it checks all the boxes and it has a lot of technology. I did not expect to come standard at this price point. You get a lot of truck, a lot of crossover, a lot of SUV, whatever you want to say, for the money in this car. But that's my time that concludes this video. Thank you guys for watching another one. I really appreciate it if you made it this far. 
Remember to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. I do a lot of food reviews. Those come up a little more often than these do. So be, soon, be, tuned to, be, be sure to tune in to those. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. I probably just said that, but do it again. If you didn't do it the first time, please. And remember, there's never an empty tank or an empty stomach on this road. And don't forget my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm giving one of you 101 bucks in your pocket whenever I hit 1,000 subscribers. I'm hoping to hit it by Christmas, but we're, we're coming up on the fast. You know how fast Christmas come up. I would love to give somebody some money for Christmas to go shopping or spoil their kids or their loved one or their dog or whatever. Anyway, take care, guys. Stay safe, please.